something we all need Gotta have it now if you wanna succeed Striving, surviving, that's no doubt Sticking together, we gon' find a way out So all you young people give it your all So all you young people give it your all So all you young people give it your all So all you young people give it your Good afternoon, the back community. Thank you as always for staying involved. Thank you for staying engaged. Um, listen, um, today uh, we have Mr. Ramel Atkins, uh, Triple R, um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, this guy here has his hands uh, uh, in a lot of different areas. And actually, um, I'm looking forward to uh, to your conversation today for a lot of different reasons, man. I know last time we talked, you know, we talked about the process of healing, the purpose of therapy. I want to get at you about, you know, some of these wild and crazy stories you've heard as a bus driver, you know, and I want to connect with you, uh, most importantly, uh, on, on grieving and loss. You know, I know today is your mom's birthday. Shout out to Miss Deb. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so but uh sitting here with me right now. Yep. Yeah, man. Let me see. Let me see. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, I, oh. I think you should put her. There you go. Listen, man. Yeah. Heavenly birthday yeah. uh to yeah. Miss Dev for that one. Yep. Yeah, but listen, man. Uh, I, I I know I know who you are, but I'm gonna get a chance to 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 get a better understanding uh of you while I have you on the back community. But the first thing I want to do is I want to give you a chance, Mel, to uh, formally introduce yourself to the back community. Tell us what it is that you do and um, uh, something that you're passionate about. All right. My name is Ramel Atkins. I'm a bus driver from Far Rockaway, Albany, Schenectady, Capital Region. Mm. Um, father of three. And I love uh, loved fitness, believe it or not. Mm. Facts, facts. Listen, listen. Oh, well, fitness is going to be one of the things that I can't wait to jump into. Uh, 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 I can't wait to jump into with you as well, because I love your fitness story. I love your uh, vulnerability and sharing your fitness story. And mm -hmm. like, you know, people people might get it confused. They say, well, you know what? He's he's hefty. But no, fam, you work out more. You do more exercising than than than, than some of these folks who's who's skinny mini. So, yeah. you know, I love your passion uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and dedication towards it, too. So, yeah, I, I can't right. wait to uh, talk to you about fitness, man. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, no. OK, OK. Well, listen, man, thank you for uh, affording me your time today. And actually, um, you know, one of the things I probably I could I could start off the top with you uh, with is fitness. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I happen to follow you on both of your social media accounts, but one of them is you versus you. And yeah. in that one, uh, you always highlight uh, your journey to fitness and your goals to get rid of or to meet a certain weight. You know, how did uh, how did fitness become a big thing for you and why? All right. I did it like like four years ago, three years ago. Um, I lost one hundred and seventy five pounds on my own. No surgery, no nothing. Um, just eating right, jogging and everything. Um, the reason I did it, um, one day I was eating. So as a bus driver, you have, you sit down a lot. Mm. Sometimes you work nine, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. So, um, we don't have time to cook and stuff. Mm. So basically you're eating out every day, mm. you know, so for lunch, breakfast, you're eating. So at, at his apex, I was spending up to shit four hundred dollars a week on fast food. Yep, Tell between the right. liquor, between the liquor and everything, um, it was so bad. And you know, I'm I could say it because it's my truth, but <laughs> I had I had credit at at the, at the pizza shop in Jamaica spot mm. to the point I'll walk in, they had my food ready, and I paid them on Friday. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that that went on for years. And I blew up to three, almost 400 pounds, 375. Mm. And then one night I had ate some pizza and uh, woke up choking, like thrown up. Mm. Couldn't breathe. Thought I was dying. Mm. So uh, I looked in a, 
So I cleaned myself up. It's heartburn. Mm. And I said, enough is enough. So next day, it was like July. Started off walking. I said, I'm, I, I went, bought a sauna suit, went and walked. Jog. I thought I was going to jog. I only could make it to the fire hydrant, man. Mm. <laughs> next day, made it to the light. Mm. Next day, did a block. So it went all the way tight to the mile. So mm. I'm miles, doing miles, 18 minute miles. Mm. Then I shaved it to 15 minute miles. Then next thing you know, I'm sure I started running two miles, mm. three miles. So at at APA, I was running sure, 15 miles. Mm. And back easy. Uh, did a couple uh, like little marathons and stuff like that. So I was in the path. Started training people. Started the juices business. Was doing everything. And then I lost my mother. Mm. Lost my mother. Uh, got depressed. Real depressed. And um, because of the type of job I have, you know, we can't smoke. Mm. Yeah. You know, we could drink. So we could eat though, because you know I get random drug tests. Yep. So that took me a tailspin, and I I blew back up, mm. and was depressed for like three years. Now I just started going to therapy, snapping mm-hmm. out of it. It, it. it. I I think we all should go to therapy. Facts. We all of us uh, have traumas with us. It's just that. Us black people, we make it look good with anything. Mm. You know, we make pain look good, but I recommend that for everybody. Oh, therapy. absolutely. Absolutely. I think I've been in therapy since 2016, somewhere around yeah. there. You know what I mean? Give or yeah. take. And then I've also done grief share, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and losing uh, people that's close to me. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I, well, we both talked about, uh, uh, I know you lost your mom and, you know, like you said, how that uh, sent you down uh, uh, a spiraling process. Right. And it's just like, you know, well, how am I going to cope with it? And eating is one of those mechanisms that most people cope with. This is definitely mine. If I get in an oh. argument with my wife, it's just like, listen, I know you don't want me to go eat this. I'm going to go get this anyway. That's what I'm right. going to go eat, right? So it's a, it's a coping right. mechanism uh, that most of us actually go to uh, uh, to make us feel better. But And in turn, after we get done eating, it probably makes us feel bad, but that is a, it's a coping mechanism. And, and that, that's what the term comfort food comes from. Mm, yeah. You know? You know? Mm. Yeah, man. But um, what uh, I, I know you had the moment uh, there uh, where, where you thought you might have been dying and you said enough was enough. And I think that those moments are, you know, when we are uh, convinced and convicted to really make a change. It's like sometimes you can hear the information from from everybody else, but it's not until you have some fire up underneath your ass. That's just like, well, you know what? No, I really had enough. Enough is enough for me. Everybody had to hit their bottom, dude. You got to want to change with anything. Nice. Like, you can't say I'm doing it for my kids, doing it for my girl, doing it for this one, that one. You got to do it for you. Mm. That's when you have to be, like, selfish and do it for you. Because mm. you're going to be sitting in the room. You're going to be in the hospital bed. And that's when I realized what my seeing my mother go through what she goes through. At the end mm. of the day, it's just you. Yep. You know? Yep. And then you end up... I, I remember my mom telling me something when she was battling cancer. She said, uh, she says, you know, one of her major concerns was that, you know, uh, she didn't want everybody else worrying about her. My mom is is is, is stubborn as 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 all outside. So she's like, you know, I don't want nobody caring uh, uh, or putting an extra burden on me because now I'm worrying about them. And what she said was that she says, Ty, you know, uh, at what point am I able to just worry about me? If I still can't even worry about me while I'm battling cancer, at what point am I able to just worry about me? And, I, you know, I, I took it, I understood uh, it, and, and I respected it. And it was just like, you know, well, you know, l- let me know how I can mm-hmm. fall in line. Let me know how I can uh, uh, play my part because it's not my journey, it's your journey. That, wow, you just dropped the jewel on me because that made my, that put it, in perspective for me because we really didn't find out 
until we had that uh you know that meeting mm. that, that good old this about her rest meeting you know the mm. family meeting mm-hmm. that's when we kind of found out how serious it was and she kind of said the same thing i was mad at her like how can mm. you not tell us and she died four days later mm. you know after the whole family found out mm. so i that's a good perspective to look at. I ain't never look at it like that. Listen, man, it's 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 one of the I guess it's probably the most self selfless way that you can look at it. When you say that, you know, it's not my journey, right? You know, and because I got a, I, I got a bunch of siblings, right? And it was just like certain things my mom was experiencing because I was her healthcare proxy. She didn't want everybody else knowing. So it was like mm. I just had to eat that and keep that with me, right? Mm. And it's just like, but. Once again, it's not my story. So uh, I have to respect the person who put me in this position to go ahead and hold, you know, her information. And right. sometimes we we think that it's selfish for a person to not tell, but everybody knows what they can deal with and what they can't. And then they don't need extra added pressure by, right. you know, I mean, the people that they love the most because, you know, they might not even be able to articulate the laws or what's coming up ahead of them. They don't know. But it's just like, you know, so I've learned I've lost enough people to 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 be respectful of how everybody wants to handle their process. And I hope that when it's my time, you know, I mean, I have my time too. that people will respect how I want to handle my process. Yeah. Like like for me, it's like uh, it's something about somebody dying sick Mm. than 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 a murder. I don't know why. It's like uh, this for me. The sickness hit me more than somebody mm. getting killed. If that makes sense, mm. which it shouldn't. It should be the murder will help me hurt hit me more. But no, nah, it's it's somebody being sick for me. Mm. Okay. I don't know okay. why it's like that. But well, the difference the difference is is, is 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 a loss is a loss, right? The 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 more important part is I think one of the things that we don't talk about is how mm. to deal with loss. Right. And it wasn't until I went to I went to grief share when my mom passed. So my church has a grief share ministry um, and and I got a part of the grief share ministry. And I would go and I would go there and meet with other folks, kind of like an AA meeting. Right. But it was just Mm -hmm. among other individuals who had lost someone significant. It could have been a sister. It could have been a mother. It could have been a dad. And it could have been years and years ago. Right. But how we handle grief is different for every last one of us. Right. And there's no time right. frame on when, you know, what I mean, oh, you should be better now or, you know, well, you shouldn't do this. Everyone processes differently. And for me, it was very important early on to say, well, you know, I want to handle it uh, as healthy as I could. So I don't want to I don't want to burden myself by putting this all on my back and saying, well, you know what? Uh, let me just deal with it my way. Let me put myself in a space where God's going to be able to help heal me. And I think that was the most significant piece for me because it really did help. It was just like, wow, you know, uh, some people probably would have never known. It was like, wow, well, what I was going through because, you know, like you said, Black people carry it differently. But, yeah, you know, I think it's important to put yourself in healthy spaces and people who you can be vulnerable enough with to to let out what you need to get out because holding it all in ain't good. No. Yeah, holding all in ain't good. Yeah, man. And 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 this, you know, I'm I'm, I'm going to say this before I segue to my other point, man. It's just like uh, I'll say this for you because I know I've crossed paths with your mom plenty of times, right? Yeah. And um, one of the ways one of the ways that got me through for both my mom and my dad was that like I asked myself constantly how could I honor them how could I honor their truth right Mm -hmm. and it's just like you know what would they like right my mom my mom was a huge community activist uh, at heart right and like I said uh, I had to tell her sometimes stop telling people your opinion woman She'll go up the street <laughs> and be on the corner of Judson and Second and telling people to pull up their pants and, and don't do this. I'd be like, listen, now somebody's going to say something to you one of these days, Pat. And then I might have to come up here and, and be like, so stop saying, like, boy, be quiet. So, you know, but I've, I've learned that my mom had a deep passion uh, for community work, which was one of the reasons why I got involved uh, in community work so early on in my life. So when she passed, it was like, well, what could I do? Uh, what could I create? Uh, that allowed me to feel like, you know, I was continuing that work. 
and and that helped with the grieving process too. Okay. Yeah. My mother was like that too. Wow, that's crazy. It, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because it I I uh I didn't realize until after she passed that that was your mom. And it was just like so I was uh, out the but, house. That's why. So everybody knows my little brother and sister. Okay. When she was working the tops and running around here. Yep. Doing the same thing your mother was doing. Yep. Go to school. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. 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 It was crazy. But, yeah, man. And, and you know, I think uh, one of the shortfalls in our community is that, you know, we don't have enough tools that talk about grief. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I've, I've gotten to uh, to to conversations or, um, about this where I said, you know, I think on top of financial literacy, because that's another topic all by itself. But learning how to deal with grief is something that we really need to come together collectively uh, as a community or within our families to talk about, because most of us do not know how to deal with grief. Most people, you know, what I mean, might not even know etiquette to go into a funeral or, you know, or uh, stuff like that. And, you know, how to process it or realize that everyone is entitled to their own feelings and stuff like that. And when you lose a matriarch of a family, most times, or a patriarch, you know, most times the families end, end up crumbling because we're not prepared to really deal with it uh, mm-hmm. ourselves, let alone deal with it collectively. Right, right. Now you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see, man. But yeah, so so fitness. And, you know, I think your bounce back, because you said you dropped 175 pounds, your bounce yeah. back might have been... Um, uh, it might have been smoother for you, because if I'm not mistaken, you always play ball, though. I remember you from playing ball back in the day. So you always played right. ball. So you always had that mentality, which is like, oh, you know what? I know how to get it. Right. It's just just, just doing it, you know, because um, life, you know, life hits you and you make excuses. Oh, I got to work. Oh, the kids. Oh, this. Oh, that. Nah, because at the end of the day, when you are not doctors or in the hospital, mm. then you're going to be sitting there talking about shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know. Facts. You got 24 hours in a day, you know. It's up to you how you use it. Facts. So that's why I try to get it in on my break, go for a walk, anything, just anything. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, uh, I tell everybody, go get your blood work done too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go get your blood work. If you have insurance, go get your blood work done. Mm-hmm. Um, that tells you everything, like what your, how everything is, your hormone levels, your mm-hmm. thyroid, um, your cholesterol. I went today. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm telling. Go get your blood yeah. work done. Yeah. And it, it actually tells you what you should not be eating, what you should be eating, mm-hmm. believe it or not. So I have a lot of changes to do, especially us getting older. Yep. Just because you don't feel it don't mean it's not happening. Mm-hmm. I feel every bit of it, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I look at myself and it start aching. I ain't got to do nothing. It's just like wow. I look at my knee and it's just like, oh, I feel like this. And you're like, oh, oh, so yeah. Yeah, go get your blood work done. I'm telling you. Go get your blood work done. Take vitamins. Uh, you know, drink lots of water. Um, right. And you know, if 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 it's one thing I've gotten a lot better at is 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 water consumption. That had a lot to do with my wife. Just like I used to keep mad juices, V8, orange <sighs> juice, apple juice, all types of juice in the house, right? But she was like, all you need is water. Like, if I want to drink water all day, but you that know. Listen, now everybody in the household, we drink water all day. So, yep, gallon a day. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see, man. I know uh, you also alluded to uh, your work as a bus driver, right? Which is, yeah. uh, 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 it's going to lead, lead me to my next series of questions I like to call Confessions of a Bus Driver. <laughs> and, you know, you know, I put that together uh, based oh, upon that no. old school HBO show, uh, Confessions of a Taxi Cab Driver. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love that's what actually led me to you. You know, yeah. I was watching what you were doing on your breaks. And I love what yeah. you just said. Like, we all got 24 hours in a day. The difference is what you or how you choose to use it. And I seen right. you using your break time as an, an opportunity to say, well, you know, how can I use this time properly? And I loved it. It's like I see you on your breaks, man. You doing uh, you, 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 you got the you, you got the rolly machine. You're sitting here, you got your bands, 
Yeah. And, I, and, and I love it. And it's just like, you know, everyone's always talking about time now. Everyone's talking about time. If I had more time, if I had more money. Right. I think that we have enough time. I think that we have more resources and money than we've ever had. The difference is, like you said, how you choose to apply your time. So tell me. Um, well, actually, I think you might have alluded to it, too. Just like We're lazy. You know, <laughs> We're lazy. That's, that's, we have time. We have resources. We're lazy now. Yeah. Let's call it what it is. We're lazy now, and everything's easy to get rid of now. Nobody wants to do the work with nothing. Facts. You know, with anything, you know that. Yep. You know, you look on the internet, everybody thinks it's easy to get rich. Mm. Everybody, it's easy to do anything. It's just, we're lazy. Mm. So we have the time, but it's just like with anything, we're going to make time for stuff we want to make time for. Facts. You know how that go. Facts. Facts. Well, listen, man. Well, uh, you you are giving a a live uh, example of what you can do with your time, because mm-hmm. as you said, you know, because you're a driver, you're constantly on the go. So you constantly got to pretty much eat out. Right. But what you mm-hmm. also did was learn how to better manage that time and, and to take those gaps that you have to work out for yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and I love it because it's, it's motivational to me, uh, as well. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's motivational for everyone else who's watching the process. And mm-hmm. if you got rid of 175 pounds before, you know, I can only imagine what you're about to get rid of right now, because you have a, right. a, 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 a different set of motivational skills right now. You know I mean? Loss right. could be the ultimate motivator if, if used right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Shout out to Far Rockaway Queens. Uh, 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 I know you. I know you mentioned that one too earlier. You know, uh, Colony Street, two seventy five, Colony Street. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let me let me see. Well, when 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 did you make your way up to to the Capital Region area? When did you make your way up to Albany? 90, the end of ninety seven, going to ninety eight. I came out here. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that's when Belly came out, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. That's when I came out here, and it's so funny. When I first came out here, I thought it was no homeless people. Mm. It was cold, mm. man. That weather changed, man. I thought, where the fuck all these people come from? <laughs> you know, I live, I live behind the baseball field when I came mm. out here. So it was dead. You know, you remember how I was over there, yep. man? Wow, it's so mistake. God damn. Mm-mm. He said, "Listen, when it got cold out, it was it was different." It was different. It was freezing. Yeah. You know, it used to be colder up here. It's not as cold as it used to be up here. Mm. And then it just, I was like, damn, the weather broke up. I'm like, where the fuck all these people come from? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out, sh- sh- shout out, shout out to the ball field. Shout out to Decky. Shout out to Flay down there in the ball field, man. Still holding mm-hmm. it down after all of these yes, years. Sir. But you know, uh that that area uh, uh was a very uh important area uh, of life for me for a lot of different reasons, man. Shout out to the ball field. <laughs> I, I used to love the ball field. <laughs> Uh, dice games at the ball field, chasing ladies at the ball field. Yeah, I remember yeah. when I used to come home from college. I that my first thing I wanted to do was to go down that way and <laughs> see all of the activity was going on at the ball field. Man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let me see what I got for you here. Oh, all right. Um, so not only are you a bus driver. Uh, mm-hmm. not only are you into fitness, um, mm-hmm. I know you also were doing prolific juicing as well. All yes. right, tell me a little bit more about uh, prolific juicing, and I'm coming back to, to my confessions of a bus driver question. Well, that was that was something that really helped my weight loss. Um, mm-hmm. was the juicing, then I started figuring out um, combinations and how it helped you. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I noticed, my energy level was mm. through the roof. And I got stronger on a plant-based diet mm. <laughs> than I ever was. I was benching like three and some change. And mm. I couldn't believe it. Cause I'm like, you know, it's protein, 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 protein. Mm-hmm. But I was, I was stronger. I don't know. It's the energy level. That's all I could say. Energy level, energy level. Um, I called it that because I love Nipsey. Okay. Shout so I yeah. took that, you know what I'm saying? I took that with that um, and, and called it that. Um, 
It was good. Like I, this, everything just fell apart once mom once mom died, man. Okay. Um, I want to get back to it. You know, it was a it's a passion of mine. Um, but see, I I, I want to do it once I'm like really into it. Mm. You know, I'm not in it for like the money or nothing like that. Like the thing was, I was like, I was trying to get my mother the juice and everything. Like the healthier something is, the nastier mm. it tastes. Absolutely disgusting. So, so you know, then now it's so hard to find certain things. For example, like sea moss, because mm. it's so popular. People are selling fake stuff. Mm. So they don't want to mess around. You putting tire rubber in you. You know, you don't know what you don't know what you're getting. Mm. So that's 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 one of the things too. Finding a good sea moss source mm. and. A lot of stuff is uh, genetically modified. See, when I went to Delaware, to the farmer's market, everything had uh, seeds in it. Okay. So I try to stay away from stuff without seeds, but up here, everything don't have no seeds in it. So mm. it's, it's hard to find, like, soursop, stuff like mm. that. Soursop strengths cancer cells. Mm. But that's hard to find. Mm. Like, stuff like that. Dragon fruit. So the yellow dragon fruit, the seeds... It's like a uh, it cleans you out when you eat it. Okay. So the the red one is regular, but that yellow one is the sweetest. But you better make sure you're not going nowhere. Mm. You know? oh, okay, yeah, you better have a bathroom close by. Is what you yeah. say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yellow one, that yellow one's no joke. Mm. But the, but the seeds and everything cleans all the toxins out your body. Mm. And then you know stuff like that. So if you don't have no money and you need to go to the bathroom, Epsom salt and water. Mm. Or Epsom salt and juice clean you out. Epsom salt. Epsom salt, yes, sir. You, you talking about sitting in it, not drinking it? Drinking it. Really? Yeah. It's not Epsom possible salt. to drink Epsom salt, is it? I do it once a month. Really? Yeah. Take it. Let's let's two three teaspoons some juice clean you out. You'll be surprised. Okay. Okay. Not okay. the flavor one though. The regular, not the one with the orange and all that. Just the regular extra salt. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I always thought it was like bath. Uh, bath wasn't it? just mm -hmm. just uh, just for bath. Mm -mm. Regular extra salt. Okay. Okay. Got gotcha. you. None of the lavender. I ain't never messed with none of that. Regular extra salt though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, let me see. Let me see, man. Um. Um. A uh, hot topic for me is confessions of a bus driver. Uh, okay. First, first one uh, that came to mind is Artis Hughes, the guy out of Cleveland, uh, uh, infamous for the uppercut. Uh, <laughs> he got know. the girl out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to watch that video a couple more times oh. before before I had you on because I had to go look at. I had to remember all of my horror stories uh, mm. uh, that happened on the bus. Um, okay. But yeah, man. Uh, uh, what did you think about the whole artist Hughes story out there uh, when the girl spit on him and hit him in uh, Cleveland? Should he have gotten fired? Um, I'm not sure if I can put you on the spot for that one or no, but what? What no, do you think? What, okay, yeah, no, but see, uh, all right, you have two type of bus drivers. You got the ones that that like uh rode the bus before and. They don't take their job too serious. Mm. Then you got the ones that think they cops. Mm. You know, and you could tell that like their shirt might be tucked in, shiny shoes, mm. tie up the hair, mm. you know, pen right here, badge mm. right here. Like what it be on so Are oh, they serious? They're serious. But <laughs> for me, like I never had an incident on my bus. Mm. And going on eleven years, no, no argument. Probably argument here and there, but no craziness. The reason is because you treat people how they treat you. Mm. So if you don't have your money, I don't care. Mm. Um, you know, that's the, that's my whole thing. Like it, it's not gonna come out my check. It's not gonna bother me. What, what, only time it bothers me is like you have people that <laughs> come on the bus mm. with their hand. And go like this to the fair box, beep, and walk up like, what are you doing? Mm. I'll say so. <laughs> <laughs> or 
you know, they'll be like, um, or they'll just walk on. <laughs> yeah, or they'll just they'll just walk on. What are you doing? Like, I'll stop you if you do that. But it'd be it's the same people all the time. You could tell, like, you got like you got people that let everybody else get on. Yeah. And then they'd be like, hey brother. But you don't got no money? I'll I'll be loud. You don't got no money? Nah, nah, all right, go sit down. Or you, or, hey, how you doing? What do you want? It's it's that bad. If somebody says hi to you, nine times out of ten they want to ride. Okay. Okay. You know. Or okay. you know. Oh, you got this, or they'll use their they child's bus pass. Hold on, let me decline that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna wait uh, for him to hop back on here because um, uh, confessions of a bus driver uh, is hilarious. And one, I don't think that um, uh, Mr. Hughes uh, uh, should have got fired uh, for that one. Um, yeah, don't worry. I was just curious. I was, I was keeping. I was, you good? You good? I, I, I was keeping it going. Uh, uh, Why you were going? I was just saying how I don't think that uh, Mr. Hughes, the bus driver out there, should have been fired. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one, you know, I do understand that. I guess uh, he could have had a different protocol, which would have been just like, just let me stop the bus where I'm at. Let me not keep going back and forth with her, and let me just call the authorities. But it's certain things, Mel. I promise you, it was just like you know that'll just get to my to my core really really fast. Now spit. you spit, yeah. You you spit on me. I, I'm I, I don't know I don't know what might come out. So and and I, I've done a lot of work, but I still don't know what might come out in a situation that's like the situation like that. Thing you do, that's the worst thing you could do. So see what messed him up uh, is when he got out the seat. Honestly, mm. uh, see the whole thing is we're allowed to do stuff, but um, it, it's they they always want to know can you prevent this? Yeah. So that's the number one thing. Can you prevent this? Can you prevent this from happening? Um, when he got out the seat, that's what he messed up at. Okay. But but the spit, what he should have did, he should have spit back on her. Really? Because then he wouldn't have got fired. Listen, in, in, in today's day and age, I don't, I don't know about that one because well, you can because get fired over spit. something smaller. Yeah, but the moment he sees she. She hit him. He hit mm-hmm. her. Yeah. Spit back on her. Let her hit you first. She did. She hit him. She hit then him. She, she, she spit on him and she hit him. Then and he then, got and, fired. Yeah, and, 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 and then that that's when he got up and he was just like, what he said, you going to hell now or something <laughs> like that. But she so, ate that part. She ate that yeah. part. Oh, that head went back. I said, oh, yeah, she be fighting. Yeah. That, Listen. That, that head went back like it was nothing. <laughs> no, it was like the soul got lifted uh, out of her, just like yeah. Ah. yeah. But but I just remembered the story, and it was it was so much in in, in the media, and I think people don't realize uh, how much uh, you guys as drivers have to endure, right? Oh. Uh, uh, just here in the D.C. area, uh, uh, you know, um, I want to say within the last two to three days. You know, a group of guys got on a bus uh, uh, trying to go get after some other guy and then start shooting. Um, right. And they ended up hitting two kids and another innocent bystander. Right. Did you so, see the thing in, in Jersey? What happened? When the driver, they jumped the, the driver and the driver shot him. Yep. 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 I seen it. Yep. But that's that that's the thing. Right. So 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 when I'm talking about confessions of a driver it's because, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, uh, as drivers who are doing a public service and job, you guys have so much interaction with people who you might not even know what their spirit is on on that day. It's just like, you know, I'm going through something or I want to bring something. No, you're right. And you're right. And that's why with me, like like when somebody get on my bus, I always, always make sure I look, make eye contact with them. Mm. Regardless. And then, you know, I got st- so one day it was co- so when it's cold, it's twenty five degrees or, or, or colder. The bus is free. Mm. So this couple got on the bus, and he was like, uh, "No, you know where the hospital's at?" I'm like, "Yeah, I go to Albany Med." You're like, "Okay." He's like, "Yeah, man, I got no money for a hotel. We're gonna sleep in an emergency room." 
mm. for the night. And I'm like, damn, you never know what somebody going through. And then, you know, another time, God kept asking for a free ride every night. I'm like, yo, what, what's up with you? I said, yo, I'm homeless. Mm. I'm like, damn. I gave him a couple dollars. Go get some food. And mm. I knew he wasn't lying because he wore the same thing every day. Mm. So you, you, you right. You, you know, we, we think working in the public, you know, police, mm-hmm. bus driver, school teacher, any, like, you deal with a lot. Absolutely. Especially with uh, COVID, man. Really, mm. we, I really see, I was out there mm. for everything. Mm. I'm talking about when the when the army came in Albany and turned the mm. parking lot to a, a base. Mm. I seen all that firsthand, but I also seen the ugly truth of, of of people. Like some people are in a position where they at because they want to be. It, mm. it's, it's crazy. They take advantage of the, of the system. Like like we was giving free bus rides for what six months. Mm. The moment they put the fear back, y'all motherfuckers don't do nothing for nobody. I start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Y'all rode the bus for free for half a year. Yeah. So you've seen it. You've seen it. You've seen it. Like, mm. oh, I like man. what you just said too, though, because you know, uh a lot of people are where they are by choice, right? And for some people who've never dealt with somebody uh in homelessness. You know, you might not realize that there are some people who choose homelessness, right? Uh, for for whatever reasons, obviously it's not one textbook answer uh, for everybody. But sometimes it might be family issues at home. Sometimes it might be, you know, I just don't want the responsibility of bills. You know, I've heard several different help. things. You know what I mean? Help. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I, I have a, I have a guy I know very, very well, and he's just like that was his answer. You know, I don't want the responsibility of bills, you know, and it's just like so. Like you said, a lot of people uh, uh, put themselves in those positions, uh, but in your position, like I can only imagine the amount of people that you have to encounter on a regular basis, and you know, in a lot of ways, it puts you in a position to just be a positive force, a positive presence. So I like what you said. You make eye contact with everybody that comes on your bus. You treat everybody uh, with respect. And like you said, out of 11 years, you haven't had any issues on your bus. That's a huge testament to, you know, how you treat people. And that's, that's the most important part of it, regardless of what people are going through, because people are rude as fuck uh, today. I don't care what you say. So, (laughs) Uh, they are rude and people feel entitled to to talk to you yeah. the way that they yeah. do. Be like, well, I'm paying your I'm paying your uh, salary. No, you're not. So, but then when you see him outside of work, is hey, brother. Oh man, I was just playing, man. And this, like, All right. but the but but <laughs> but the but the but the, but the good thing is too. I also seen people that that was on drugs and stuff get their life together. Yep. You know, that and I seen kids that was knuckleheads go to college. Mm-hmm. And thank you for the you know, tell me thank you for mm-hmm. you know. So that meant a lot to me. Then I also seen people fall off. So it, mm-hmm. it, it has its ups and downs and stuff like that. But um it, it's it's crazy out there, man. Yeah. And sometimes listen, I, I'm sitting there thinking about uh what you just said. It was like I remember in 09. Um, 09 was the first time I started to realize I have anxiety, right? You know, I was okay. going back and forth to the hospital and I didn't know what it was because I was used to being healthy. And, you know, I was just feeling like I was having a heart attack all the time. Just like, yo, I didn't know what it was. And uh, in my job, I've heard people come in and, 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 and talk about anxiety all of the time. And I never really understood it until it happened to me. But long story short, when when in 2009 and I'm, I'm having these anxiety attacks, you know, one of the things I realized was, one, I got to learn how to get my breathing uh, together and down. And also I got to learn how to let go of some of the things that I'm trying to do. I was doing too much. So at the time I had three cars. I had a Benz, a Maxima, and a Q45, right? Oh. I got rid of all three of my cars. I got rid of all three of my cars. I had two phones, right? I got rid of the other phone. I'm just like, you know, and I'm, I'm I'm running my mentoring program. I'm working my regular job. I'm studying for law school. I was about to have my first son. And, you know, 
everything just it started to hit me all at once. So where I used to think that I was Superman, I used to think I was Wolverine. Like I can get hurt and I get healed like this. I realized how fragile of a person I really was in 2009. But when I got rid of those cars, I started riding the bus. So of course, some people would probably look at me like, oh, you know, oh, well, you, oh, you want a bus now, whatever. You know, I got rid of my cars purposely, right? right. One, it was, it was a, it was an attempt to save money. But two, it was also to get rid of all of the extra stuff that I had that, you know, trying to manage all of this extra was also causing me a great deal of stress. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, but yeah, I used to ride the bus from Albany to Schenectady every morning. I used to love that thing. It was the most peaceful thing in the world. I'd fall really? asleep on the bus, uh, uh, listening to my music and be like, listen, I actually like this. I don't, not having the responsibility of driving. And just get out there, get on the bus, relax. Listen, that little that, that little commute from Albany to Schenectady was 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 everything for me. The fifty five. The fifty five. Oh, wow, the A train. Oh. The fifty five. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it made me it made me remember how I used to take the bus. I write about this in the in the book too, like. Um, when I turned 12 or so, you know, my mom used to allow me to take the bus to go see my dad because my dad always lived. Uh, he had lived in Schenectady at the time. So I finally had gotten to a point where I was old enough and she trusted me enough to go ahead and take the bus from Albany. We were living on 291 Clinton Ave at the time. So I mm-hmm. would I would walk up the hill to what's that? Uh, Washington in, in Lark. Oh, Washington. OK, you know. Uh, hop on a bus, take this long go commute, and I promise you the 55 stops everywhere, and then it's then it shuts down at a certain point before it goes to disconnect or it used to at least, you know. So it's be a long ride, but my mom trusted me enough to get on the bus, and it wow. was such a um, a huge part of my transition because I was able to get to my dad and my little brothers without having to wait for them to come get me anymore. So I used to take that 55 bus. So I, you know that 55 bus was just it's, it's monumental in my life. I mean, they got rid of it now. When I when I started, that's when they got rid of it. Mm, okay. So they, it's express now. Okay. okay. Yep. So 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 no more no more no no more stops out there by uh, the the price shopper uh, away out there. Uh, what was no. it? Uh, Smoking bones or something like that is out there now. No, they keep going now. It's just, it's got, it only has what twenty stops now. Okay. Nice. Yeah, nine oh five. That's what they call okay. it now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me see, man. I'm going to get you to some unrelated questions. Um, uh, uh, These are some of my favorite questions I like to ask everybody. Um, um, Thinking about the younger version of you, Mel, thinking about your younger self, uh, knowing the things that you know now as a man, as a dad, you know, what is something that you wish someone would have told the younger Rob Mel um, that you know now that you need it? What is something you would tell the younger Rob Mel? Uh, you don't need every pair of sneakers. Mm. That's the biggest waste of money. Um, if I could go back, I wouldn't have bought all the sneakers like that. Mm. That's that's one thing. Um, because um, I had a fire years ago and lost everything. Mm. At one time, probably had four hundred pair of sneakers. Oof. I worked at Footloose for years. So it was one of my jobs. And um if I could go back, like the stuff it don't mean nothing. Mm. You know, when you when you die, you don't take none of it with you. Now like I really see what that means. So all that stuff really don't all that material stuff don't mean nothing. So if I could tell my younger self that I would tell myself that. Yeah, for real. Okay. And save okay. that money. And save that money instead of instead of wasting it. Okay, okay. And it's in, it's interesting uh, that you say that. You know, what I mean, if you had a collection of four hundred plus sneakers, when you think about how profitable sneakers can be, too. You know, what I mean, with uh, with resale, resale is out of this world right now. So, but imagine if you if like I said in your case, you know, it was it was more so it was a it was a personal collection for you. But imagine if. You had that 400, uh, uh, 400 plus sneaker uh, catalog and you had the business acumen to say, well, you know, we're early on back then. This, this is this is what I'm doing because it can it, if done right. You can make a lot of money 
in this game too. The, the sneakers I had, I looked I just looked at one, but I one of them was seven seven hundred dollars now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I had original like uh, Bo Jackson's with the thirty four in the back. Mm. Original preseasons, Emmitt Smiths. You know the mm. Reebok joints. Um, the Adidas with the sock. Uh, original Air Raids. You know mm. the Tim Hardaways. You know stuff like that. But Tumbos, uh, original Pennies. Uh, first, I'm going on uh, phone posits, man. Uh, original Elevens. Like mm. not all this remade stuff. Like man, Shack attacks. Uh, man, Clyde Drexler ponies. Mm. The Adoras, you know, shit like that. Like I could go on and on and on and on and on, man. Yeah. What's stuff that that? Okay. You know? uh, that was a good one, though. It was a good one. It was uh uh, you know, but like like you said, you know, the things that we spend our time and money on that 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 won't uh that we can't take with us. <laughs> I feel I feel that way. No, I don't take that back. I was about to say I think I feel that way about my music collection, cause I, but no, I don't. Uh uh, I look at how much money I spent on cassettes and CDs over the years uh, and DVDs, but how all of that stuff is uh, I mean, I uh, obsolete. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. And they make us like get into the new technology without us even knowing. Yep. Yep. You buy a new car, there's no tape deck and there's no CD player. Nothing. Nothing. You got to stream everything. Now you have to buy the streaming service to mm-hmm. listen to it. But I'm going to tell everybody the best streaming service to me mm. is YouTube music. Okay. So you get YouTube premium. You could skip all the commercials. Yep. It comes with the music for free. Mm. Cause you know, Apple, Spotify, you know, what's the other one? Title. They don't have everything. Mm. YouTube has everything. If you can just think of the name of it. So if I if I go to YouTube and YouTube's catalog, I can find Fat Anything. Joe's first album, the Anything. Jealous One Envy album. Anything. Because it's so hard to find that album, man. I'd be you like, listen, Flo I love Joe. that album. You can find anything. Flo Joe, all that's on there. Okay. 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 Everything's on there. Whatever you can think of, it's on there. Okay. All right. All right. I, 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 would, have to, I would have to check it out. Uh, I, I have YouTube TV. So I'm not sure what the difference is between YouTube Premium. It, so you so you know you go on YouTube and you, you watch something and the commercials come on. Yep. I, I I don't pay. I pay for. I don't get no commercials. Okay. So for fourteen ninety nine a month, I get YouTube Premium and it comes with the music. YouTube. Listen, music. I got I got to figure out what what I got then because mine is way expensive than that. I must cut the wrong the thing. You got cable. YouTube TV. Yes, cable. yes, I do. Right, yes, right, I do. Yep. Okay, I might say, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? Yes, you're yeah, right. Mine, yep. Mine, yep. Okay, okay, yep. Uh, for a second, I was about to get upset. I said, wait a minute, what's <laughs> what is only, going on? That's only if you're into music. If you like like the organizational title and all that stuff, and mm. you don't feel like searching for stuff, yeah, stick to those. But if you want to, you know, I, I like like old clue tapes and stuff. All that, all that stuff is on there. Yeah, well, listen. I was looking for I was looking for the Cluminati tape, and I What's definitely found there? it. I found it on YouTube, and I'm just like, uh, oh man, this is uh, this is amazing. It was uh, another one, summertime something. Summertime uh, shootout. No, some, no, no. What? No, no. no, no was it summertime? It, no. Summertime. Oh, uh, uh, this did, this one had uh, it had LL Cool J's uh, lounging. It had. Um, mm. It was. I remember it. I I still I still had. Well, I had the cassette tape for a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. I was living downtown at the time. Uh, uh-huh. I, I had the cassette tape for a long time. Anyway, but you can find all that stuff on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So w- when I was writing the book, it's a chapter in there uh, called "It's Deeper Than Music," and, it's, and it talks about oh. you know my love for music. It also talks about you know I me. Mean, shout out to my man Cormega uh, down there in, in your hometown. Uh, yeah, but it just ooh. talks about how music has been so instrumental in my development. Like I could trace everywhere I was in life based to the music I was listening to at the time. So certain things that certain things like, damn, I was yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me see, man. Um, uh, thinking about the word success, everyone has their own definitions of success. Uh, uh, how would you define success? What does success look like for you? 
Uh, I think I'm rich and successful now because my kids are not growing up like I did. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's success. Um, you know, they could go outside and play. They could, uh, you know, they don't have to worry about the things I worried about. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, to me, that's success. That's you know, cool. first and foremost, you know, everything else is a luxury. Mm -hmm. You know, but to me, that's success, you know, seeing my babies and, and my daughter's about to graduate in a year. She, I'm sitting in her room now. She, you know, doing hair and she found her passion young. And mm. I, I think that's because of me. I had bought her a real live mannequin, like mm. a real mannequin head yep. at five years old. And she mm. just started playing with hair since then. Now she's nice with it. And that, that, that just gives me, she found her passion young. So nice. You know, that gives me uh, the chills right there. So I feel like I'm rich and I'm successful already. I love that. And uh, I'm going to make another musical reference right now, too. Uh, uh, Nas said, he says, you know, you know you're rich when your kid's uh, upbringing is better than yours. So yeah. pretty much that's exactly what you just said. And it's, yeah, it's, it's the truth. You know absolutely. what I mean? You know, just allowing your kids to, you know, the freedoms that they have. Sometimes I feel like a pussy. I'd be sitting here, you know, I let my kids get away with murder sometimes. And I'd be like, man, I would not have any teeth if I tried some what? of this with my mother. It was man. like, they'd, be, they'd all be gone. <laughs> so it, it, It's crazy because it's like, I can remember getting, because going back to the sneaker thing, the reason I said that, because I can remember being a kid and you get a boot, you might get a boot and a sneaker and then something for Easter. That was mm. it. Mm. That was it. I'm looking at my daughter. My daughter got like, 15 pair of sneakers right here, right there. Mm -hmm. Not me, not, no. And we knew, and it was so crazy. So back in the day, I used to put, I used to go to the shoe, the shoe mall, the, uh, what's that? The shoe place? When you could do, they, they, uh, they fix your shoes. Yep, yep. So you take your Tim's, this is New York shit. You know what <laughs> I mean? New York State shit. <laughs> Cause now, no other states don't wear Tim's. You take your Tim's and you get, you get the taps in the back. So the rubber don't wear out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I should do that. Mm. So the constructs will be fresh the whole year. Because, mm. you know, once the constructs start leaning, you got to throw them away, man. Yeah, you got to throw them away. It's like, listen, man, away. what happened to you? You say, what happened? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you got you to gotta let them go. So you get them chaps in the back of the hill, mm. and it hold that rubber a little longer, you know? Mm. Okay. Okay. The kids don't know nothing about that, but, you know. <laughs> Mm -mm, mm -mm. Listen, they they live in a world where consumption uh, comes easy, uh, and and yeah, the, you can throw it away, get something new. It, like it's like like a lot of things, like even music. When music came out back in the days, it was just like yo, know. you know, you had to spend your money on which album you was gonna get, and then I would sit there and dissect the album, read every bit of the credits, all of that stuff. Now music comes out in so much abundance. It doesn't even really give me the opportunity to dissect and digest how I used to. Sneakers, all of that stuff. It's you just like, lucky to like an album, not like because I think to an album for a week yeah. might get a buzz, and they call it a classic after a week. I don't, I don't know. Mm -mm. I don't get it. I don't get it. I just think it's. I don't know. I don't get it. It's different now. Like if you look at the double XL cover from five years ago. Half the dudes is not even out no more. Yeah. yeah. It's different. Like yeah. called Mega, nah, those are timeless artists. Mm -mm. I don't think we're gonna get that ever again. Mm -mm. Honestly, the type of artist. I think that I think that you're 100 percent correct, but I also think that the reason why is because you know, you look at Mega, you know, Mega, Mega's been independent for a very, very long time, but outside of the music, Mega has grown as a person. Yeah. Right. So you know, uh, one thing I always loved about music was that there was always a message. I got some type of motivation. If I was going to go hit somebody in the head, you know, there was something I was listening yeah, to yeah, to go yeah. do that, right? If I, was, right? if I was looking for change or transition, you know, there was something I was listening to. There was a message. Most of today's music is just a vibe. Like people yeah. say, I'd be like, yo, do you even hear what they're saying? And be like, well, nah, but it's a vibe. I'm just listening to them. Like, I don't listen to music for just for the vibe. I listen to I, I'm looking at your interviews. I'm looking at uh, your music. I'm looking at your growth. And if I can't, mm -hmm. if I can't vibe with that, you know, I don't really vibe with you. But that's why yeah, Nas right. has such 
a prolific um, career. That's why Cormega, you know, the realness too was dope. I was just sitting there like, wow, okay, okay. You know, you have those, you have those artists who are able to to last uh, different uh, decades. LL Cool J, Snoop Dogg, Jay Z. You know what I mean? Their ability to constantly reinvent themselves and still stay true to who they uh, who they are. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. today's right, generation right. is just a fad, man. A lot of it, it is. A lot of it. So it is. No oh, shit. I'm saying it is. What <laughs> damn bullshit! It is. It is. My daughter get mad. Like, what are you listening to? What you know? What you really saying? I don't care. I like to be okay. Uh... Mm-mm, mm-mm. Uh, I, I was impressed. I tested my oldest uh, some Christian one time because uh, he likes Rod Wave, right? And I'm just like. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, so I've been listening to uh, his joint. He wanted to go to the Rod Wave concert and stuff like that. So that's what we got him for his birthday, right? But I'm just like, can you even spit me a Rod Wave verse? Because I can still go back and spit some Tupac verses right now. I can spit all types of music for you. Mm-hmm. But he was able to do it, and it shut me up. Because I was like, well, at least <laughs> at least y'all can understand it. At least you can understand it, and you know what they're saying, because I have a difficulty with it. So I, I, I gave him uh, a step back. She want me to go to a little dirt concert. I'm like, oh Jesus. Mm. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, mm. like, come on. I'm like, oh man. You really gonna mm. put me through that? Mm. So I'm trying to listen to some of this. I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prepare myself. This in this case I go with her and I'm like, I can't listen to this shit. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. It's like I can't listen to it. We have become those dads. <laughs> Stuck yeah. in an era. It's just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why you can't have no that. basketball argument with me. I don't want to hear it. I don't, mm. No, no. That's why they're doing everything over. They did house party over. Mm-hmm. Leave me alone. Leave my. They trying alone, to get man. back. They trying to get back here. This is what they're doing. Even music. Music has come full circle. Where I think we went so far to the right that now people are getting back to like a uh, 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 Griselda's or people are getting back to like a uh, currency or all of these different mm-hmm. dudes is like you know what I mean. So anyway. Simba. Yeah, Simba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll go. See, I'll go see him. Yeah. yeah. Shout, shout out to my man Jay Cole though, because uh, 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 Jay Cole has been true through and through, and he started off wanting to go in one direction uh, and follow that Jay Z blueprint, but when he decided to be himself, boy. Cold, 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 cold world. And Kendrick Lamar, man. And, you know, I'm going back to Nipsey. I know you got prolific from Nipsey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean? Oh, man. Yeah. I was on him in, oh, I was on him in 08, 09. Mm, facts. I listened to him a long time, man. And he made his best body of work and then he get killed. Yeah. Like, damn. Mm. Like, all the mixtapes. That was the yeah. best body of work he made and he get killed. It's like, damn, man. Mm. Yep, yep, and and it's uh it's it's so sad because you know sometimes it's still difficult for me to listen to his music. Like a lot of people didn't get on Nipsey until until he died or until he started getting recent stardom, right? Mm-hmm. But I've been a fan, you know. What I mean, I'm just like I remember driving to Buffalo and I would listen to the Marathon album the whole way, just like you know, oh, uh, 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 a forever a uh, fly cripping, whatever that joint was. It was, yeah, it was yeah, my yeah, joint, yeah. man. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh. You know, and it's just like you talk about going back to what we said earlier uh, and grieving and, and things like that. And just like, you know, for me as a fan, you know, I still grieve that sometimes it's still difficult for me to listen to it because I got so inspired listening to his music. You know, he would put me on a different books and shit. I would go read the books. But then it's just like just realizing how he went out was so whack to me. It's like Whoa. the community did that to him. You read Contagious? Absolutely. Absolutely. That book, yeah, that book is yeah. Listen, that's, listen. I got uh, a lot of ideas from that book, man. That's that's that was the blueprint of me starting my business. That book. Contagious was, like, yeah, was the Jonah blueprint Bird. for my rollout with my book. You know, oh, wow. and I and, and I was just I, I wish that I had contagious back when I was running my mentoring program because there was wow. so much I could have learned and and, and and did with it. And but Nipsey put me on a contagious. Shout out to what's it, Jonas Berger? Jonas uh, Jonas Berger. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that book yep, was yep. amazing. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Oh, let me see. Okay. Man. <laughs> listen, man. Listen. Like, like I said, I don't. I don't listen just for a vibe. I'm listening for somebody. Okay. You know, let me know your your walk of, your walk of life. How'd you how'd you get through this, right? Okay. Or, or how'd you become what you became? 
those type of artists or entertainers, you know, I gravitate towards because it's wow. more of a message uh, for me that I could relate to. You know what I mean? I don't need a vibe. I can create my own vibe. You know what I mean? Right. Let, let me, give me some motivation. Right, right. Well, let me see. I got two more questions for you, man. I'm letting no, you go. Shoot, shoot, I'm chilling. I'm all right, go ahead. Second and last question. Was, I forgot what any of you were Go ahead. Second to last question is, you know what I mean? Thinking about your life's path, thinking about where you are today, uh, thinking about all that you've been through, right? What about your life's path are you most proud of? Being alive, getting gray hairs. A lot of my brothers uh, are gone. Mm. You know, I've been losing people uh, since last summer that everybody was alive in the uh, year 2000, mm. 2023. You know, mm. a lot of us, you know, didn't get, the, get these. Yep. Needs, you know, um, that's what I'm, I'm proud of, and my kids, mm. and my family. You know, there's a reason why I'm still here. You know, through everything, because I could have easily been one of them that didn't make it. You know. Mm. Yep, uh, I respect that, and I love that uh, uh, so much. Uh, that uh, actually, uh, um. It's super important. It's just like, you know, the thing, the everyday things that we take for granted. Like right. you said, just physically being here, being in person, being able to see your kids grow, right? right. Being able to uh, to live, to breathe, you know what I mean? Right. That right there by itself is, you know what I mean, uh, such a blessing when you realize how many people that you grew up with that, 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 Not here. that yeah, didn't make so, yeah. Yep. And my last question for you, uh, my last official question for you on the back community is uh, what are you listening to? What are you reading that motivates you? I always like to ask these questions because understanding a person's mental also allows you to understand, you know, what I mean, what drives them, you know. So what are you I, listening I, to? Any podcasts, any books? Um, uh, what are you listening to that's motivating you? Uh, far as uh, books. Um, wait for your book, as you know. Yes, yes. I yes. just downloaded um this book called uh, uh, "Peak My Interest" called uh, "Good Gut Health." I mean, mm. the good gut. Mm. So I'm gonna see what that's about. Uh, I was listening to uh, uh the book I just finished listening to was called "You Are a Badass," mm. and I want I want to listen to this other book called "The Jungle" mm. about the food uh industry. Okay. About the meatpacking industry. But it's podcast, yours, of course. Okay. Uh, my expert opinion. Shout out to Mav Halfa. Yeah. You see the Cormega interview? I did, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'm a Cormega stand. <laughs> yeah. Um Joe, Joe Rogan, uh mm. Earn Your Leisure, you know. Um Sometimes uh million dollars worth of game. I'm I'm not into the whole um celebrity thing like that. Mm. You know, it has to be uh interest because I think we get so consumed with other people's lives, we forget about yeah. ourselves, you know. Mm. Um you know, we get distracted so much. And mm. that's the thing like with uh COVID, people lost their damn mind with no sports. Mm -hmm. You know. I, and that's the thing. If you put the world back to like uh, 1995, what would people do when you were forced to talk to each other mm. and, interact, and, and interact with each other? Mm -hmm. You know, this uh, technology is making us more dumb. I know for me, I don't remember phone numbers no more. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, per I purposely oh, uh, I only know three <laughs> for the I most part. I don't even know my childhood phone numbers. That's it. Mm. I don't know phone numbers. That's crazy, though. To mm. see where we was at. So we were getting like lazy and lazy with everything. Mm. Yeah. You know? So and we got more access to 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 everything. But like you said, uh convenience in a lot of ways has has crippled us, but it, it has helped us too. Cause now I think about yeah. driving. Can I? Can you imagine driving from state to state without without GPS on your phone? And remember having to print out the MapQuest details. People did it though. And... People did it though. You can't. Yeah. yeah. We would have been. We would have adjusted. 
too. Mm. You know, we yeah. you right. Yeah. You think about it, like, damn, we had to. And uh, funny thing, when we first started CTA, that's the one thing we had to learn how to do mm. is remax mm. because of the, the small buses, the star buses. So we wasn't allowed to use the GPS because we couldn't look at nothing and drive at the same time. Mm. So we had to get maps and learn with. So that you're right. That was that was crazy. You're like, what do you? I got to look at a map. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man, uh, Mel. Uh, uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, like I said, no this. Uh, 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 I, I wanted I wanted your conversation for a lot of different reasons. One, right. just because I, I felt like it was going to be down to earth, which exactly what it was. Uh, everything that. from therapy, from grieving to uh, real life uh, laziness going on out here in the world, you right. know, and uh, I'm thankful for your story. I'm thankful for the motivation that you give out, which is why I wanted to highlight you on the back community. Uh, you right. are an inspiration to me. Continue to do Thank exactly you. what you're doing. Uh, that woman that you got right there in your spirit and next to you right now is her birthday. So mm -hmm. whenever you're looking for additional motivation uh, as to why outside of your kids, you know, just remember what it, what it would be or what would make her happy or what, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, what she would find enjoyment out of you doing and use that as motivation uh, to continue to uh, pursue your passions, man. So uh, salute to you, too, man. No, oh, thank you. Thank you, bro. For real, for real. Yeah, man. It's a blessing to be here. But uh, I can't wait to get your story out there to the world, man. Enjoy the rest of your day, man. I play catch up with you Appreciate later. It. Thank you. All right. Salute. Salute. Keep climbing up the ladder. A Black Lives Matter. It matter. Matter. So you young people give me your 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 Matter, matter A black lives matter They matter, they matter A black lives matter